y'all, it's Shimdi. So I have been living in Los Angeles, California. I'm not saying where exactly because I don't want y'all murdering me. For a whole year, yes, 12 whole months, and for not one of them days have I owned a car. Yes, the land of the freeways, of the 110, of the 101, of the 405, of the PCH. I only barely know what those words mean because I have been able to survive in this city without a car. And not only have I been able to survive, I have been able to thrive. I have been playing tennis in Griffith Park. I have been hiking in Runyon Canyon. I have been swimming in the beaches in Santa Monica and Venice. I have friends in Playa del Rey and I have friends in Glendale and Pasadena. And I have gone to, you know, What's the one with the flowers, botanical gardens and whatnot? I've been at the Grove, I've done hikes to the Hollywood sign. I have lived a full life here in California. It has been a good life. It has been honestly like, thank you Jesus, a very blessed life, all without a car. And you can too, all right? So I've got three tips and I've also got three realities about living in Los Angeles without a car. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first tip is to hack Google Maps. I think you might use Google Maps where you just open up the application, you type in where you wanna go, and then you look to see what place you need to walk to, what bus you need to take, what direction it's going in, and then you just like go, right? No. So the way to use Google Maps is actually to, especially when it comes to using buses, when you indicate where it is you wanna go, press start trip. You might think, oh, well, I'm not the one who's driving the bus, so I don't need directions. No, so when you start the trip, what you have access to is seeing this little bus icon that'll actually show you where the bus is en route to you. And that means you know exactly how long you have to power walk to that bus stop so you don't miss the bus. Because what can happen if you just glance at Google Maps and you just start walking is that something could change in between the time it takes for you to get from A to B where the, some, the bus actually speeds up, it slows down, and so you end up possibly getting to the bus stop and waiting longer than you have to or finding out the bus has already left you. And I will tell you, there is no greater betrayal than when you get to a bus stop on time and the bus has already left. Nothing hurts as much as that. So the key is to avoid that completely and put in the location you're going to and then press start the journey. On top of making sure you know exactly when your bus is gonna be there, I would always suggest you give yourself 10 full minutes to be waiting at your bus stop before your bus is supposed to be there. Yes, 10 full minutes. The buses, they are pulled by their own spirit. They don't obey time the way you and I do. They are pulled by their own spirit, their own journey, all right? So it's up to you to make sure you are there ready it is not up to the bus to be there on time, okay? That is what you have accepted because you have decided to not get a car. Hey y'all, Chimdi from the patio here. Another thing I wanted to mention about the bus system is actually right now, I don't know if it's because of Corona, um, buses are basically free right now. So it's super duper affordable to get to places using public transit. And obviously I do not advocate stealing, but our metros are pretty lax when it comes to checking fares is all I'll say. But like I said, I do not advocate stealing. Okay. And that's only one of the features of Google Maps. So you can use Google Maps to determine, um, you can plan your route by when you wanna leave, when you wanna arrive, by the modes of transport you wanna do. Um, so for instance, sometimes they might only show you how to get there by bus because that's maybe more convenient or that takes fewer stops. But actually, you know, if since you're on the road, there might be more traffic with buses and you wanna eliminate that. Or even just like zone out on a train. And so you actually need to go into the settings and change it so that make sure they're actually showing you train options. And that could end up saving you like a ton of time and a lot of headaches. So definitely leverage Google Maps. Make it your best friend as you are navigating this city um, and speaking of navigating the city the reason why you want to learn Google Maps is because it will save you time and time is the biggest thing that you will need to consider when it comes to creating a social life for yourself because sometimes it'll actually make more sense for you to just get an uber and a lyft because the place you're going is two and a half hours away and it takes five trains to get there and it's just you know what it's worth the cost and the price to just pay that 
um, so you can avoid having to do all that on public transit. But that is not a sustainable way to live here. So you have to figure out how to navigate public transit and all these other things to make it work for you because otherwise it is gonna be really, really hard. So this takes us to one of the realities of living in Los Angeles, which is that before you commit to any event, before you buy a ticket to any show, before you agree to go to anybody's birthday party, you need to figure out where that person lives, where that show is, where that event is taking place, put it into Google Maps, and plan your trip there before you agree to go, all right? Every single time. Because what can happen if you don't is you'll be like, oh yeah, girl, I'll go to your little party or whatever, sure. You don't do the work to look. Then it's the morning of, you put it into Google Maps and it turns out it's gonna take two and a half hours to get there, four trains, two buses, plus an Uber and a scooter, and you're not gonna go. I'm just telling you, you're not gonna go. And then what happens? Then you become that flaky friend. People stop inviting you to do things. You get all lonely, get all sad. Probably start doing drugs. Lose your job because you get into reckless. Maybe end up on the street, living on Skid Row. Your family's like, we should have never let them go out there. They're just sad and disappointed in you. Best case scenario, maybe you can sing, you know? And some kid walks by with 25 cents and a camera phone is like, sing for us old man, sing for us old lady. And you go viral, maybe end up on Ellen if she's even still around. But then guess what? You get 15 minutes. But after that, the internet always forgets you. And where are you? Still ain't got no job. Still ain't got no friends. Family has abandoned you. All because you didn't want to take the time the night before to Google Maps how long it would take to get to your friend's birthday brunch. Is that the life you want? I don't want that life for you. So another tip for getting around Los Angeles is to take advantage of the scooters that are all over the city. There's Bird, there's Lime, there's Lyft, there's Uber. There are all these different scooter options. I would download every single app so that no matter where you are, if you see a scooter, you're ready to pull up your phone, activate it, and go scooting off into the sunset. So I know you might be a little scared of scooters, all right? If you are, first off, living a life of fear is a one-way ticket to hell. But also it's not that hard. Just get a friend to like practice with you, have them unlock a scooter, go to a little parking lot, practice, you know. You will pick it up within 10, 15 minutes, I promise. This is a money back guarantee, all right? If you don't learn how to use a scooter in 15 minutes with a friend in an empty parking lot, you come back to this video and you leave me a comment and I will give you your money back for watching this video, all right? I guarantee it. One thing though I would suggest do not ride on the street. It is against the law to ride on the sidewalks. I do it all the time because cars are deeply insulted when you have the nerve to bring your bare body and a loose piece of metal onto their roads. The cars own the roads. It is in your best interest to just respect that. Don't try and fight that. If there's a bike lane, feel free, but you are taking your own life into your own hands if you choose to ride a scooter in the street. But. You know, the actual stats for scooter accidents are still far below what you see for cars. So it's still a safer, all right, but just be careful. But I use it all the time. It can seriously take a 20 minute trip, turn that into seven minutes. It makes it so much easier. It allows you to hack Google Maps even more because you can say, all right, well it's saying it's gonna take me 20 minutes to transfer from here to there. But that should just like scoop to this spot. It'll save me a whole thing. So definitely leverage the scooters. Um, and your friends are here to help you to learn to practice if you are scared of using them. Hey y'all, it's Chimdi from The Scooter. So listen, I am so curious to know who you people are that are watching this video, all right? I'm tired of this one day relationship where I create content and you watch. I want to know who you are. So go ahead and first give this video a thumbs up if you're liking it, because I'm working very hard on it. Go ahead and leave. In the comments, go ahead and let me know where you're coming from if you're thinking about moving to LA, if you currently have a car there, if you're gonna try to make it work in LA here without a car. And yeah, I just wanna talk to y'all. I wanna respond to every single comment that's posted, okay? So talk to me. Okay, bye. Speaking of friends, 
That brings us to the second reality about living in Los Angeles without a car. And that is that it is very, very difficult to maintain friendships with folks that you do not live close to. So you are gonna have to be very, very intentional. So that could look like, of course, meeting in the middle, so one of you is not having to go the entire distance, but I would strongly suggest that you make friends with people who have cars because you're gonna be hanging out late one night, it's gonna be like 12.30, the bus is gonna be shut down, you know, the Uber is gonna be surging at like $100 for a ride, and you wanna be able to have a friend who's gonna be like, nah, it's cool, girl, I'll drop you off at your spot. You don't have to, you know, pay $150 for a 45-minute Uber ride from Marina Del Rey to your part of town. Like, you don't have to live like that, and I, as a friend, will make sure you don't. So that's something that I would really strongly suggest. And what's great too is that those are the friends who will be going on adventures because they have a car. So by becoming friends with them, that means you get access to cool road trips like Ojai, for instance. Check out my video on my little road trip with my friend Bree, who has a car. Love you, girl. It just gives you all this great access because California has so much cool stuff and a lot of it can only be accessed by car. So you need to have people in your life who have a car so you can have access to. And then my final tip for how to live and thrive in LA without a car, it's the most important one and it's really applicable to those of you who are gonna be renting and that is find a walkable area to live in. So you can just Google walkable areas in LA and they'll give you lists and you can explore. So MacArthur Park is an example, Koreatown is an example, um, certain parts of like Silver Lake are an example, Venice, um, Santa Monica. Now, chances are if you're watching this video, you're probably too broke to afford to live in Venice or Santa Monica, but maybe you're into getting roommates and that's cool, it's not my lifestyle, I can't relate to that, but you can get some roommates, you know? Share things, sharing's great. Share a fridge, share a bathroom, share walls, just hear each other, just getting it on, you know? And if that's what you're into, I don't judge you. We're not on this channel, we're not judging nobody, all right? We are all sinners here, okay? And that speaks to the final reality of living in LA when we talk about sinning. It's gonna be really hard to maintain a relationship <laughs> with fornication. <laughs> and that brings us to our final reality of living in LA. I love it here, I love this city, I'm so glad I moved here, I have such a great time here. But it can be a very hard place to live. It is expensive, it can be lonely, it is hard to maintain friendships, it is hard to date. And all of that is so much harder when you do not have a car, all right? So if you live in Silver Lake and you meet the love of your life but they live in Playa del Rey, your relationship is doomed. You will not make it because no one has time for that traffic. And that's just the reality. So you need to make sure you are living in an area where you are able to get your groceries, you are able to go to public transit, you are able to go to the library, to the park, all the things that you will need in your life to be happy. You need to make sure they're in walking distance or in scootering distance. Because if not, it's gonna be really, really tough for you to live here. You're gonna end up being really unhappy and you're probably gonna end up leaving and being that person who watches LA is overrated videos to make yourself feel better. And that sounds sad. <laughs>